I'm joined by Democratic Senator Ben Cardin of Maryland, who is the ranking member on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. Senator, thank you for joining us. It's good to be with you. Thanks. Last month, you said that uh, Russia's election meddling was an act of war. When you uh, heard about the president's speech today, were you hoping that he would um, he would declare war on Russia? Well, what Russia did to the United States cannot go unchallenged. It's not just the U.S. what they attempted to do in our elections. They also did it in Western Europe. And we've got to speak with a strong voice that we will not tolerate that type of behavior. We can't cozy up to Mr. Putin and give him compliments when he is attacking our country. We need to impose the mandatory sanctions that Congress authorized uh, earlier this year. The president needs to be in the forefront of working with our European allies to strengthen uh, our uh, sanctions against Russia. That's what I want to hear from the president. He takes this seriously. He's taking action against Russia. It needs to be measured, uh, but it needs to be responsive to what they have done against us. You say it needs to be measured, but you use very specific language. You called it an act of war. So if you think it is an act of war, don't you think that the president needs to be stronger in his rhetoric? I mean, it feels like you're advocating for him to do something more than just sanctions. Well, I want him to be stronger with his language. That's absolutely certain. When you attack our free democratic election systems, that, that's, that's a hostile act against the United States. So I want to hear the president first condemn Russia. He's still challenging whether it happened or not. He's still raising questions as to whether Russia did anything in this country. He's still giving Mr. Putin credibility. I, I, I want to hear from our president that that conduct is unacceptable, that we're working with our European allies to make it clear to Russia that they need to stop that activity, that we're going to impose sanctions against Russia, which will affect their economy unless they change their behavior. And we can monitor their behavior and making sure that they're not, no longer interfering with our election system. Given the interference, do you think that we are at war with Russia right now? I think we have interests that are different than Russia. I think Russia is trying to, to affect our way of governance. I think they are trying to spread their influence in Europe. Uh, they are looking for vulnerable countries. We see what they've done in Ukraine in trying to destabilize that country. We know that there's Russia's troops presence in Moldova, in Georgia. I think Russia has designs for a greater Russia, and they are trying to, to have their way of governance prevail over ours. Your general reaction to the speech, though, there must have been stuff in it that you actually like, the decertifying of the Iran deal, uh, getting tough or talking tough, at least, on ISIS, uh, talking about a booming stock market, low unemployment. Well, I, I, I must tell you, I liked some of the statements that were issued as part of his national security strategy, where he does talk about Russia's behavior, at least the strategy talks that way. But quite frankly, when the president talks about America first uh, and talks about us uh, leading but not working with the rest of the international community, when we pull out of the Paris climate talks, when we act unilaterally on the decertification on Iran, that's not what a leader does. That's that's not what the United States should be doing. Um, turning now to, to the Mueller probe, uh, are you worried about the integrity of that investigation? Well, quite frankly, uh, I think everyone should be worried to make sure Mr. Mueller has all the authority and all of the resources he needs to bring this investigation to its conclusion. We certainly do not want to see the president interfere in any way with the independence of that investigation. And it's not helpful when we hear uh, language like he may fire Mr. Mueller. Uh, that, that type of language should not be used by the president. Well, is it helpful to have agents on that investigation like Peter Stroke? I know he was fired, but um, the text messages that we saw uh, with him. Are you concerned that, that he has compromised the integrity and, and given an opening to, to people who don't want this investigation to continue? Well, I, I think it's quite clear that Mr. Mueller has the confidence and respects of the professionals in the field. No one has accused him of being a partisan. He's not a partisan. He's trying to get this investigation done in a professional manner. And that's what I think we want to support. If you had learned last year that there were FBI agents who were in, uh, working on the Clinton email investigation, who were exchanging text messages, calling Clinton's, Clinton names like an idiot or, or saying F. Clinton, would you be concerned then? 
I'll be concerned about anyone in an investigation that doesn't act professionally, and we have seen circumstances that, of individuals involved, that disciplinary actions have been taken. But as far as the supervision of the Mueller investigation, I have total confidence in Mr. Mueller. His, his, uh, his reputation, his record of professionalism is, is certainly, I think, beyond reproach. You have to concede, though, it's given an opening to the president's supporters to say that this is not a fair and impartial investigation. I must tell you, I've never seen anything like this before, where you, you, you have uh, a, a person of Mr. Mueller's reputation being challenged uh, as far as his uh, independence is concerned. To me, that is trying to discredit his recommendations before they're made, trying to undermine the investigation. That, uh, I would hope, would have no place in American jurisprudence. Let's talk about sexual harassment. Your colleague, uh, Senator Manchin, uh, thinks that um, Senator Franken should reconsider resigning. Take a listen to what he said. What they did to Al was atrocious, the Democrats, the most hypocritical thing I've ever seen done to a human being, and then have enough guts to sit on the floor and watch him give his speech and go over and hug him. That's hypocrisy at the highest level I've ever seen in my life. It made me sick. He hasn't resigned yet. He said he's going to resign. Senator, what's your reaction to Senator Manchin? Well, let me give my reaction to, to Senator Franken. He made a decision which he thought was best for his constituents and himself. He recognized that his behavior was wrong. He took full responsibility for it. He believed that a long ethics investigation would compromise his ability to represent his constituents, mm -hmm. and he made that judgment. I Let's respect the judgment. Let's be honest, though. I mean, it, it, was, it was under intense pressure from a number of Democrats. It wasn't until a number of Democrats like, uh, like Gillibrand came out, uh, Senator Sanders, Senator Hirono came out. And and said that he should step aside. That's when Franken decided to step aside. Manchin says it was foolish for the Democratic Party to pressure him that way. Do you think it was foolish? I think Senator Franken made the judgment he thought was right. Uh, uh, each individual but senator But that's not what I'm asking. I'm asking, no, do you think it was foolish uh, of the Democrats uh, to pressure him into resigning? You, uh, that, you have to ask each member who made statements on, their, on behalf of Mr. Frank, Senator Franken. They have to take responsibility for their actions. Senator Franken took responsibilities for his actions. Senator Cardin, thanks so much for joining, it, joining us. Thank we you. always appreciate your time, sir. Thank you. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.